let's take a look on TFNN.com. If you go to the services tab, you get the secret science of market tops with Tim Ord and then six secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ord as well. It's a straight lecture series. Whenever you listen to him, if you ever want to know kind of more about why he's looking at certain things and then how that kind of fits in to the grander picture, these webinars you have got to get. Those are $149 each. You can watch at your leisure. Keep going back to them whenever you want. Tim Ord, welcome back. All right. Got a lot of calls on gold here over the last couple <clears throat> of days or the, the gold market anyhow. Yeah. And uh, so I think it's important to look at that, see what's going on. Okay. So um, let's take a look at chart one. Give me one second. Uh, get it up. I think we are good to go here. Uh, okay, you good to go. Okay, yep. now this is this is a bigger trend. The, the week or the monthlies rule, the weeklies, the weeklies rule, the dailies, the dailies rule, the hours, and all the way down. So to really keep with the trend, you should look at the bigger trend and trade in the direction of the bigger trend. So the chart we're looking at right now is the monthly GDX, and that's the middle window. And it goes back to 2009, and the bottom window is the monthly cumulative advanced decline with this Bollinger Band, and the top window is the cumulative up-down volume with this Bollinger Band. Signals, are, it's kind of like a repeat, you know, but this will get us to where we need to go. But anyhow, the signals are generated when both those indicators, that's the top window and the bottom window, close above the mid Bollinger Band, and sell signals are, are created when they close below the Bollinger Band. And the last signal triggered was uh, back in May of 2000, this year, 2024, both closed above uh, the mid Bollinger Band. It doesn't try to catch the exact bottoms or exact tops, but it does catch, buzz, it does keep you in the trend. And the trend is where you're going to make the money. Uh, yeah. So anyhow, it gave a buy signal in May of, of, of this year and remains on a, a buy signal, as you can see, both of those indicators above uh, the mid Bollinger Band. So let's go to the second window. And uh, that's just the same indicators. Uh, well, the bottom one is GDX. Uh, or the GDX slash GLD ratio. <laughs> but next one up window is the weekly cumulative up down volume with this Bollinger Band. The next higher window is a cumulative advanced decline on a weekly time frame. And both those indicators are above the mid Bollinger Band. They're kind of backing off right now, but the bicycles are still valid. I'll put it that way. So it's a okay. monthly bicycle and a weekly bicycle. So nothing's changed on the bigger time frames. So let's look at the dailies to see where that is. Yep. Uh, okay, the bottom window is the GDX to GLD ratio on a daily with this Bollinger Band. The next window up is the GDX advanced decline cumulative with this Bollinger Band. Uh, next window up is the up down volume uh, cumulative uh, daily with this Bollinger Band. The top window is GDX. Okay, so there's several, these indicators are really useful, but I marked the times when three of the four indicators uh, broke below the lower Bollinger Band, those are red lines, and three indicators, uh, uh, let's see here, yeah, I should have done it the other way around, that should have been a blue line, but anyhow, uh, when three of the four indexes, so we got four indexes on there. When three of the four, or all four, close below the Bollinger Band, that's a buy. When they close above the Bollinger Band, that's a sell. And the red lines are the times when the buy signals were triggered, and the blue lines, the dotted blue lines, are the sell signals. So this indicator, since May, gave one, two, three, four, kind of five sell signals, or six actually sell signals, uh, since May. And that's and that those are just consolidations in an uptrend. So, uh, so they got you out. The market consolidated and started going back up again. Uh, right. But now we're back. The last signal came in. Uh, looks like uh, late October, and all four indicators got above the upper Bollinger Band. And that's that red line. Uh, have drawn a red dotted line I have drawn in late October there. So you can see all four indices above the red Bollinger Band. Now I got a, a green shaded area 
where we are right now as of today. And we're all hitting the lower Bollinger Band right now, all four of them. So especially the bottom one, the one's way below the lower Bollinger Band. So you can take this indicator way back a bunch of years. It gets kind of blurry, but this goes back a good year. It looks like about a year and a half. And so we're, we're obviously... The bigger trends up, the weeklies are on a bicycle, the monthlies are on a bicycle, and now the dailies are flipping uh, to a bullish uh, configuration right now as all four of the indexes are hitting their lower Bollinger Band. So we're at a low. So and this is typical when the market kind of, I guess, falls like a, you know, catching a falling knife, they always call it. Well, this indicator is good for that type of falling, you know, catching a falling knife. So, right. so we're expecting a reversal really changed, so, here, yeah, Go ahead. Uh, oh, I was going to say, we're essentially expecting a reversal right here. But, Tim, uh, actually, stay right there. We'll right. be right back after the break. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shub. I'm joined right now by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Again, if you want to check out some more of what Tim has to offer, you can go to the Ord-Oracle.com. Additionally, you can go over to the services tab of TFNN.com, and we have two fantastic lectures from Tim. That is the secret signs of market tops and six secret ratios every trader should know. Tim, before we went to the break, we were just wrapping up uh, the daily GDX uh, chart that you had there. Um you any questions about it or uh you know we're, we're definitely in, a, in an uptrend so this is the biggest correction i guess for gdx since the rally started back in uh yes you know it's probably march or something like that and that's normal i mean you can't have the market kind of just keep going straight up it needs a consolidation phase uh to build strength but we're probably hitting one right now but we're hitting a low right in this vicinity so and actually if, if you go back to chart one, yeah. Uh, if you look at if you look at the middle chart there of GDX, uh, I got uh, going. Uh, anyhow, I got a, a shaded pink area uh, on GDX. See. Yeah. You see that area, around thirty five to thirty seven in that vicinity. Well, basically, that's the previous highs and kind of previous lows. And that's where uh, that sh market should find support. And so, going back to chart three. That's probably why this indicator or down where it is. So we're at a sport area, I'll put it that way. So, and how high will we go? At a minimum, we'll go back up to the previous highs. But if you go back to chart one, again, uh, I have uh, two circles on the GDX chart, two blue circles. Yes. And we ran, we ran into the 2020 high, kind of stalled, and now we're back to support. And we'll take another run at those highs again. And basically to give a projection where the next high will be, the next significant high will be, not the minor high, you take the distance from that trend line, which is eyeballing, looks like about 41, and you take the low, which is about 21, and you add on that to that red trend line, and you come up around 60 or so, 62 maybe. And that'd be the next significant upside target, which if you look where it is, that's the old 2011 highs. Yep, right around here. How about that? Yeah. That's neat. That's neat. So, so anyhow, that's probably the next, you know, after we fool around here a little bit, we'll probably head back to 2011. And what happens there depends how long it takes to get there. Uh, you know, if it gets there fairly quick, say, you know, uh, early next year, say March of next year, then the market's not projected to hit any significant high until at very earliest of, of uh, November of 2025. I see. Okay. So if we get up there, say, in March of, of 2025, we still got six months to go. And so I don't know if that will be a significant high or not. You know, maybe we'll go right through it. So we'll have to wait and see. But this is not a top of any consequence. If anything, you're looking at a low in this vicinity. Fantastic. So um, anyhow. We can go on. Yeah. So let's yeah, let's you got check out this trend. I know we got this, this you know, the S&P itself has just been moving so heavily. So I'm interested to see what the trend is showing us regarding that. I have uh, chart four up right now. All right. Uh, the bottom one is the 10 day trend, which is the top window, never got to 1.2. And sometimes it does, sometimes enough. You, you like to see it do. But the one or the the one day or the bottom window is a three day trend. The next window up to two day trend. The next window up to one day trend. And I got it shaded in, in um, light pink. 
they all three of those got in bullish territory, but the top one is the 10 day did not. So is that, you know, mean something bad? Not necessarily, uh, but I did go back and look at the 2016 low and 2020 low where Trump was a candidate and the 10 day trend did not get back to 1.2 back in those two time frames either. So why it doesn't or does, don't know, but we've got enough panic leaves on a short term basis to keep this rally to go to go in until at least year end and from there i don't know so we'll have to wait and see yeah but i'm expecting this of all the quarters of the year this is the strongest quarter so you'll you'll see some consolidations minor ones but in general this market's going to keep moving higher so let's take a look that? at our short term view so we got the trend over uh, november 4th time frame got the one two and three trend in bullish territory so kind of seeing what's going on here if you look at the top window that's the SPY tilt ratio and that ratio pretty much trends with the market and if it doesn't then there's a divergence but if you notice uh, back in July of this year the market was moving higher and the SPY tilt ratio was actually moving lower or wasn't the, the s and P's was making higher highs that ratio was making lower highs put it that way and the market kind of fell back uh, kind of same thing happened in a, that September or late August September pullback. We had, even though it did hit a new high, it did turn down. And going into the July fourth time frame, there was a small uh, divergence, but not much. Didn't really get a great signal on that. Kind of had to fight a little bit, to, you know, to, to get going. But anyhow, right now, um, which is the uh, SPX tilt ratio is making higher highs. And the S&Ps were down today, but that ratio is still making higher highs, so we're going to go higher. Uh, this could be just a mild consolidation. We got support at previous highs, which is pretty much where that gap is, is 585. If you count the days up going into yesterday, you're up five days in a row. At five days in a row, predict the market will be higher within five days, 73% of the time. So uh, whatever's going on right now, it's not going to last long. You know, can we be down tomorrow? Maybe. But in general, we're going to move higher here because this ratio is making higher highs. And so that kind of is going to drag the market up at some point. So, uh, again, I'm keep saying this probably this year, the rest of this year in general, is going to be higher than where we are right now. And uh, we've got two minutes to go. Uh, this is a weekly chart. Let's go to chart six. Yep. And uh, upside is probably going to be a little stifled here. But if you get above the Bollinger Band, and I got circled in blue, the times were above the Bollinger Band. If you notice next month, uh, even on the uh, going up above the upper Bollinger Band, if you get above too much, <coughs> usually the next uh, week is a consolidation week. And I circled those in blue. You can see how that kind of works. So last week we did close up above, uh, above it a little bit, but you want to be 50% above it. We just closed above it. That, but what that doesn't really mean if we we're 50% above it, I'd be a little bit worried that we could have a decent correction. But we're just, you know, maybe 5 or 10% above it last week. But that's going to kind of take some energy to the upside out of the market. So more, most of okay. the time, you just hover against that trend line going up. And that's probably what we're going to do. So we'll probably get past 650s, you know, uh, has. We would we'll be probably year end, be my guess, would be around 650 not a huge amount higher than where we are, but it'll trend against that upper Bollinger Band as we keep going higher. So, you know, it's bullish, um, trends up, and uh, all of the corrections, meaningful corrections, are over this year. Right. Not saying every week's going to be an up week, but in general, we're going to trend higher on the year end. I mean, so, it's just amazing to see. Yeah, no, it's just amazing to see how much juice has been in this market that still is and uh tim it is always so great to have you on we're going to see you thursday all right all right see you